Statistics would show that you are more likely to win the trust and the job with that client if you're the first person to get in there and make the contact. So uh, don't be one of these builders that says, well, I don't want to look desperate. Hey, look in the mirror, look at your profit loss, look at your bank balance, you're desperate. So get after it. <laughs> How old are you going to be before you start to experience life like you want it? I want to tell you right now, whether you like it or not, there is a better way to do business. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Business for Builders podcast. Welcome to you if you're in YouTube land. My name is Max. I'm the CEO at Smith & Sons Remodeling Experts. And today, uh, I've got a bit of a cracking subject. And it really does come from one of our comments. But before I do that, remember, you can hit me up at max at businessforbuilders.ca. Uh, Shoot me a question or two. Not too many, not too deep. Don't write me a novel because it's going to take me ages to get back to you. Um, but more than happy to sort of help you out in any way I can. Um, and be sure to like and subscribe and all that wonderful stuff. Right, today I am going to, uh, the, basically what I would title it as is how to get a video testimonial from a client. Uh, now, the reason I'm going to talk about this is because I, I think before we really got into, or before I really got into uh, building this business, uh, I, you know, I was always looking for a competitive advantage. I'm like, what can I do now? One of those things, especially in this country, uh, was I was able to go and uh, and really use my experience in the fixed price or the fixed price quoting and contracting world, uh, because I realised that a lot of you know GCs around here uh, would do the cost plus. Now you might be a cost plus operator, uh, and that's okay. Uh, at the end of the day, whether you're cost plus or fixed price, you can still get video uh, video testimonials from clients. I'm going to talk about that today. So obviously what we're trying to do is, is uh, improve the experience the client has in dealing with you and me as general contractors so that at the back end, when we do give them a nudge and go, oi, what do you think? Uh, they'll be more than happy to uh, really help us out in that regard. Um, and so what we what we are trying to do is is to understand better where the client's coming from because I am right now there's one two three cameras and a and a and a and a TikTok live going and and it's it can be very intimidating when you have to talk to a camera it can be a little bit freaky and so you know we've got to understand that we've got to make such a big effort to make such a great impression so the clients will you know uh, go ahead and share with us their experience which is super intimidating so so I note uh, video uh, videos like we have, if you check out smithandsons.ca, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what we do. Um, the, the videos will do all the heavy lifting for you as it relates to creating social credibility. In other words, uh, prospective clients will jump on your website or my website and they will be able to see what past clients or other clients have their experience, what their experience has been. And the great thing about video like that is that it never complains. Uh, it's 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 probably the best uh, team member that you could have uh, because the thing is working twenty four seven and it never does complain. So I I think as we begin, I'm going to share some stuff which is indirectly going to influence your ability to get a video uh, a video testimonial from a client. Uh, I think the easiest thing for me to do is if I've done all of the stuff that I'm about to drop on the table right, it makes the ask very straightforward. Uh, what makes the ask impossible is if you've done a really bad job in the sales and or construction process, okay? So this is probably not an exhaustive list. There might be some things that I might have overlooked or left out, things that you might think are important as far as uh, you know how you go about making a good impression. Um, but these are ones that just come to my mind really quick. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, you know, understand the whole way through. We've got to apply empathy. I've got to think about what the client's going through and find that need and fill that need somehow, some way in my actions and my activity and my process. And so um, what, what that does is it really sets the stage. So as I move through all of the phases within my sales process and my construction process, um, I'm always being very, I'm hyper aware about what what am I doing? Is it making a good impression? Uh, is it really uh, satisfying the client as it relates to our product delivery, maybe both in the sales and the construction phase, um, and obviously the whole in the entire experience. So, first things first, um, we we've heard more than more than a dozen times where where clients will uh, we will get in front of clients and they'll say, well, at least you showed up. 
and or at least you called me back, you know, if we get them on the phone for the initial phone call. My first point is here, contact quickly. Now, I, I don't know what your situation is. I know what I do with our guys. Uh, we present them with the with the uh, the client information from the the lead gen campaigns that we run across social and Google, etc. And we make sure that um, they understand that there isn't there's there's a priority on calling that lead as quickly as possible. Uh, statistics would show that you are more likely to win the trust and the job with that client if you're the first person to get in there and make the contact. So uh, don't be one of these builders that says, well, I don't want to look desperate. Hey, look in the mirror, look at your profit loss, look at your bank balance, you're desperate. So get after it, right? And even if you're not, even for me, I'm just like, well, it's just good practice. It's just, it is at the, at the highest level when you're trying to operate, I got to get to it quickly. Speed and efficiency is what we're about. And so when a client makes contact with you, now look, we've got it set up where we can kind of insulate our guys uh, from it. You know, sometimes you're going to be with clients or with vendors uh, or you, you might even be working on site and it's a really bad time for you to take a phone call uh, at that moment in time. And so what our, what the, the luxury that we get is that either if, the, if clients ring head office here, uh, there's somebody on the phone that can talk to them straight away. Um, but if they do make a contact via our contact form, there's always a thanks for your inquiry. We'll be in contact with you shortly type of page. And so that automatically means that they're looked after. And of course, what that means is when the lead does go out to the general contractor, that they can actually position themselves and get into a, a very controlled environment where they can now make that professional initial first phone call. So always be looking to uh, contact people uh, or clients or client inquiries uh, very quickly. That'll make a good impression. We're all about making good impressions. Okay, now once you've knocked the lid off the first phone call, um, you've done a, maybe the initial meeting, you want to make sure that you communicate often, okay? Uh, there's nothing worse than feeling like you have been forgotten. Does that make sense? Nobody likes that feeling. It's like, I think they've forgotten about me. I've been stood up. Um, I'm being disregarded. I've been pushed down the list. All of that kind of stuff is, you know, is making, it's either making a good, imp you're either making a good impression or you're not. And so, you know, as we go through our day-to-day our, our -day business, and especially as it relates to dealing with clients, which is a lot of the time, we've always got to be making a good impression. They say, you know, you can never um, make a good another good first impression. First impressions are first. Uh, but I think as we go through, I have another saying, we start well and we finish strong. So everyone's keen to please because they want the job and then they get the job and all of a sudden their level of service drops off and the client notices that. They've only... They've only, they're only dealing with one builder. It's you. If you've started well, tickle their, tickle their ears, and then as the as the, the project has progressed, your ability to communicate really falls off a cliff. They're going to sense that, and that's going to go against you when you ask for them to share on video regarding their experience with you and your company. So uh, communicate uh, regularly. Communicate often. Um, point number three: clarify in detail. Right. Uh, there's nothing worse than a client sitting there being unsure as to what's included or what they get. Now, for cost plus guys, I guess you're going to um, do it in such a way where as you move forward, you start making selections, you've made maybe allowances to create the budget, whatever. Um, but what we do here uh, at Smith & Sons with fixed price is we communicate with clients very often and and specifically to do with you know, the selection. So we, we obviously don't do a lot of, you know, the, the upfront work for free. There is a cost associated with putting this whole, uh, you know, uh, fixed price together. But what we want to do is we don't want to go to construction until such time as we have got everything with aesthetic value nailed down in the specification. So what forms part of the contract is the plans and is also the specifications or the list of inclusions. And they won't be just kitchen sink tap. Or, or kitchen sink. There'll be make, model, style, uh, you know, type, uh, anything that can make sure that we understand exactly what the client wants. And so when we're talking about clarifying in detail, what that does when we, you know, more generally speaking, what we offer to clients is not just renovation and construction services, but peace of mind and security and satisfaction. And so in putting together that selection sheet well, you know, in advance of construction, what that does is that it, it really does relax the client because they go, okay, 
uh, either we've used an interior designer and there's a 40 page, you know, uh, interior design detail, um, or we've used our own uh, specification software where we can actually upload pictures of said products. And so what we're trying to do is, is really put the clients in a very relaxed state where they're not you know, anxious about you know, what's included or when it will be finished. Obviously, we're always gonna be talking about sometimes the price indication moves. We give them a bracketed price range and all of a sudden they decide they wanna include bidets and they wanna go from post form countertops to, to quartz. And all of a sudden the price is jumping up and we're always giving them the uh, heads up as to the fact that, hey, we either just hit the top of your estimated price range or we've exceeded that. Yeah, you know, Are you okay with that? And we get that in writing. We make sure if we do a verbal co communication around that, we also put that in an email because what we're trying to avoid at the back end is the sticker shock or the, you know, the, the fact that they're like, well, hang on, you told me that was going to be a 175 to 225 and now we're at 275. It's your fault, Max. Well, that's, that's not the case. We want to avoid that kind of. So what we want to try and do is educate on the fly. And that's where we're talking about clarifying in detail along the way. So uh, communicate often, of course. And, and, you know, a lot of what I'm talking about here is in the pre-contract phase, guys and gals. Um, but it also then applies to once you do hit construction. Okay, point number four is we want to present a proposal clearly and confidently. The client will be able to see and feel if you are not 100% sure on what it is that you're presenting, especially if they start coming back with questions throughout the proposal that you're making. Um, and if you're making reference to certain specifications in the project, then, you know, if you're not putting, if you haven't put that together clearly in your head, they're going to feel very, you know, not, their confidence in you is going to start to diminish, right? So you've got to be very well prepared uh, so that you can go into that, that meeting and you can present your, uh, your proposal uh, clearly and confidently. If you don't do that, um, that's going to have a lot of influence on, they might, you know, start to feel that I don't think this guy actually knows what he's talking about. And you certainly don't want to be in that position, especially after you've done so much work and you're getting so close. Um, and really after that proposal, you're only a, a yes or a no away from doing a deal. Um, so uh, yeah, present the proposal clearly and confidently. So you've got to do a lot of prelim work to that meeting. You know, you've, you've got to sit there and for, a, for a moment and go, okay, what is the objective of this meeting? How am I going to advance this deal? And you're so close to the pointy end to a contract, it's not funny. So you should spend a lot of time sharpening your axe so that when you get there and you do present, mate, you are on point. You are on point. And so, you know, there's a lot of sales craft that goes in at that point because really once you start in that presentation mode, you're now moving away from sales. You're now going into a close mode. And there's a distinct difference in the two, the two approaches. Um, and you've really got to be able to tangibly feel that when they start asking uh, what we call buying questions, you've got to be ready to, to start, to, that, that trigger has got to switch from sales across to uh, close mode. Okay, and of course, construction, efficient and organized. This is, construction is show business, believe it or not. Now, this is kind of show business, but not really. But um, construction, I'm telling you, and the reason it is, is because it's, one of the only products or one of the only professions where you and I build the product in front of the client. And so we don't get to have a, you know, a messy workshop and then all we do is we bring the nice looking finished product out onto the site. I mean, it's, it's just, that's how it works. The building sites, uh, you know, can be a mess. You know, a building site, if it, you know, pisses down with rain, it's obviously going to, um, you know, muddy the site up and all of a sudden it's just a very unpleasant place to be and it has very little aesthetic value at that time. Uh, classic is when I built some townhouses, you know, there was, I've, I've got a lot of, um, you know, during construction type pictures and photographs and, uh, you know, it's quite an ugly thing to look at. I mean, it's all structural. There's nothing, you know, but right at the back end, and I do a really a before and after shot, you, you look at that and go, I wouldn't mind living there. You know, it's got a nice fence. The grass is green. The driveway is clean. The house or the townhouses are all finished. And, um, and all of a sudden, it takes on a very different disposition than what it did during construction. So the, the challenge for you and I is that we are building this in front of the client. They have a front row seat to your show, and your show is the construction show. And, and so, unfortunately, this is why a lot of guys and gals, and you might feel this way, uh, you're intimidated if I'm working away and I'm hanging a door and I've got a client that likes to stand over my shoulder and watch what's going on. 
They treat it like it's HGTV to them. They just want to stand there all day and watch you do shit because they think you're pretty good. But for us as builders, it's a little bit intimidating because we are in show business. And so, um, you know, I, I think there's 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 challenges whether they're standing there watching you like I've had, you know, with a job not too far away from here where, um, you know, I was a retired couple and, of course, Jack just loved to watch everything that I was doing and uh, would like to try and help out occasionally. Um, sweep the floors and whatnot. Uh, but then, you know, it's, it's, then there's some cases where they will just periodically pop in and see what's happening. And their expectation, expectations are they want to see something happening all the time. And so there's pressure on us. And so, you know, <clears throat> I think we've got to understand that we're in show business. We've got to kind of embrace that at some level um, and just realize uh, that we, the more efficient and the more organized that we are, um, the easier or the better it is uh, for us to be able to execute in front of the clients, metaphorically speaking, in some cases of course. And so, you know, I think, you know, with with trying to stay organized and efficient, this is where we can start digressing and start talking about software and, and, and you know, the cloud-based softwares that we use um, and the tools that we use within the software. So, you know, you've, you've got to look at if I am going to be in the construction phase and it is uh, very much show business, what can I do to create more efficiencies? What can I use to be more organized? And that's certainly going to be something that you'll need to double down on. And of course, that's going to take a little bit of money uh, to get her done uh, as well and to get that set up. Okay, no, point number six is the ask. Okay, and this is probably where uh, a lot of guys and girls might choke at the last minute. They're just happy because by then you could have had a fairly ordinary experience with these clients or vice versa. And so you kind of get to that point where you just go, I just want to get it finished. I just want to get my check and I'm out of here, you know. Um, and I, I, I think that, you know, probably the last half a dozen clients uh, that I had in Australia, I mean, one of one that comes to mind, he was – uh, yeah, he's a really great guy. And every time I go back to Oz, I, uh, I drop in and see old Tim. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, it's, there was something about, yes, the, the, the satisfaction that I got. Uh, and in those days, I wasn't even doing video testimonials, but I do have uh, written testimonials. I mean, back in 2010 to 2012, 13, whatever it was, um, you know, getting a written testimonial was kind of the thing. And so at that point, that's all I was getting. Um, but certainly uh, in this day and age, people would prefer to watch the videos and the video is more powerful. So the ask, now if you've done everything right and you've ticked all the boxes, there is a, it, there is a chance that you'll still get a no. The amount of clients that Smith & Sons do work for, and I should probably have calculated a percentage, um, but I think in, in 2022, we might have only got six or eight, something like that, uh, testimonials, and I couldn't tell you how many jobs or clients that the Smith & Sons group had, but it was certainly a small percentage. So you can see how, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's let's say it's easier for me to create a competitive advantage and have a website full of uh, client testimonial videos, but that's because, you know, I've got more than six or seven general contractors where who are working for multiple clients. Whereas if you're by yourself, you know, your numbers, you're going to have to do a lot of numbers just to get one. And so that is that is a challenge. So it's, there's almost more, uh, it's it's more there's more importance placed on your ability to uh, really deliver construction services, including the sales experience at the highest level, because you know you don't get the second chance with that client for another uh, video testimonial. So normally, what I'll say to clients is I'll say, look, hey, you know, I really had fun working for you. Um, I'm glad you you love the finished product. What are your thoughts around sharing your experience with some other of my prospective clients? And that's as, that's as, that's all I do. I can't control what they do in response to that. But what I'm appealing to is obviously that I've had fun building it. You know, they, they really enjoy the finished product. And then how would they feel about sharing their experience with, with other prospective clients of mine who are considering building with me? So there's this law of reciprocity. <laughs> I just about balls that up. Um, there's this law of reciprocity where, where when I've given something to you, or where somebody's given something to me, I kind of feel obligated that I want to give something back. And so I, I think when when you know we've talked about the fact that you know I've had fun building it, and I'm glad you like the finished product. What's the chances of you sharing your experience with some other of my prospective clients? And uh, and they there's there's almost this 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 honourable thing that they wish to do. Um, and of course, that doesn't automatically mean they love to get on camera. 
Um, and you know what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to probably at some stage, and this is going to take a little bit, but the next time that me and my team goes out to record a a video testimonial with a client, we're actually going to we're going to video the whole thing, and we're going to do a bit of a uh, set up a time lapse. And uh, you can kind of, you know, add that video perhaps to this podcast and you'll get a, a you know, you'll see exactly what we do. Um, we might even, we might even share with you what the, the questionnaire looks like that we do send to clients ahead of time to give them a little bit of an understanding of what I'm going to be asking them. And, um, and so that'll give you a little bit more, a bit more practical as well. But it's the, it's the emotional challenge that you go through, you know, to be able to deliver at the highest level and, and set yourself up for that moment where you do feel like, okay, I'm going to go for the ask here and just to see, you know, whether or not they'd be open to sharing, um, you know, on camera uh, their experience with me and for, you know, some of my prospective clients. That's that's always going to be the gut-wrenching moment in time. Um, and so, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when you bag it up like that, that there's, you're asking them to share and you're asking them to help other, you know, some other of my prospective clients then I think that there's there's a little bit more you know less fear and trepidation, um, and it's and it's look y- your first one's always going to be your toughest. There's no question, and uh, but uh, you know there's you can you can get a little bit of an understanding of what your end result's going to be by checking out you know smithandsons.ca and looking at some of those video testimonials, and then you've just got to get you know if you can get three sorted out one two three on your website. Um, you know that's really going to go a long way, and, and then of course once you've got your once you've cut your teeth in that way, um, you know I think you'd be off to the races, and it really will give you a lot of that uh, you know that social uh, credibility that goes with having other clients, especially past clients of yours talking to prospective clients. It's a super uh, powerful way to put it together. So uh, that's the six point six points. Uh, contact quickly, communicate often, clarify in detail. Um, present your proposal clearly and confidently uh, in the construction process. You've got to be efficient and organized. And then of course uh, you want to really just define very well in yourself why you're asking for this and what it is that you're asking from your clients and do it very, 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 uh, you know, very succinctly and very clearly. Um, Hope that helps. That's the way that you get a video testimonial out of a client. Um, And we might do a part two down the track and uh, we'll give you some behind the scenes on how we actually go about executing and getting that. And, uh, and uh, it should be, uh, it should be one worth, uh, worth waiting for. So I hope that helps. That's the first one for the year. Go build a kick-ass business this year. Have a great year. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Go build a kick-ass business. Cheers. (laughs) 